but we'll make a start. We can go through some introductions and so on, and then uh, and then kick off. So, okay. Um, so welcome everyone to today to our um, improving your online presence, um, which is a very important topic at the moment. Um, lots of opportunities to do that, and lots of employers uh, reviewing online presence as well across the different social media platforms. So a great topic. Our first one of this new webinar. Uh, some of you have probably joined us on previous webinars. Um, some of you may be completely new. Uh, it'd be good to hear your thoughts on Zoom chat in a few moments. Just to cover off a few rules uh, with regards to the webinar itself. <coughs> Uh, please be present and participate. Um, so we're going to be using Zoom chat today. I'm going to be monitoring your, co your comments and questions. Uh, so please feel free uh, to post anything you like in there. Um, if I could ask you to set it to um, all attendees and panelists so that everyone can see your comments and questions uh, when I respond, that would be much appreciated. Please excuse me, please take this opportunity uh, to focus on a webinar, to switch your phone off, uh, to minimise any other disruptions while it's going on. And we've got some tools and resources at the end of the webinar that we'll talk you through uh, that will hopefully be useful and add some further knowledge to the subject today. Um, and also as well, I'll do a bit of a debrief for any questions and key themes that have come through at the end too. Okay. So just to do some introductions, for those of you who don't already know me, um, I'm Helen Little, I'm the University Partnerships Manager for SRS at Recruitment and Employability Experts. Uh, so there's a team of us, you've probably heard of Sophie Millican, who's been on some of our earlier webinars and who wrote the book From Learner to Earner, uh, which has helped students with the different phases of the graduate recruitment process. I personally work with a lot of universities and a lot of students and graduates like yourself. Uh, supporting you to get those graduate jobs and to improve your employability, whether that's through these webinars, assessment centres or workshops. Uh, really hope you find this webinar useful. And as always, we always say in our webinars, please feel free to connect with us and to uh, invite yourselves to our networks on LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter and post any questions and comments there as well. I'm going to introduce you to my colleague Zoe, um, who's new to our student webinar series. And she's actually going to be running the content today and there's a very good reason for that. Um, Zoe is our marketing coordinator and she handles um, our online presence for SRS. So she does all of our posts, she does all of our marketing and it's a subject that she's really very experienced in even before her time with SRS. So that's why she's going to be running the webinar today um, and it's a really good webinar as well and um, that I hope you get a lot of value from. I'm going to hand you over to Zoe now. Um, and I'll be on Zoom chat responding to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Yes, yeah, so as Helen said, I'm the marketing coordinator for SRS. So um, I just deliver the marketing strategy across lots of different channels, most of which are online. Um, and I also help to uh, facilitate and run the events that we put on for students. So um, that, that's what my job involves. And yeah, I'm really excited to be delivering this webinar today. And as Helen said, also, I'd love to connect with you all. So please do um, send invitations. And um, yeah, we'd love to connect. So we'll get started with um, the content of the webinar now. So you'll see from the agenda that we're going to cover being professional online, which platforms to use, developing your profiles, uh, making posts and growing connections, using LinkedIn to search for jobs, and also online courses. So before we start off, we're just going to begin with a quick poll to see where you're all currently at with your online presence. So hopefully that poll should be visible for you all now. Um, if you could just take a minute to just um, have a look at the questions and vote on your answer. So you've got a couple of questions there. Firstly, how much time do you spend building your professional network and profile each week? And also how confident do you feel about searching for jobs on social media? So if you could all uh, select your answers to those questions and just click submit and then we'll just see where everyone's at with those. Okay, so I can see most of you have voted now, so I'll just um, end that poll and share the results with you all. So hopefully you can all see the results on your screen there now. Thank you all for taking part in that. Um, 
So we can see that the majority of you are spending less than an hour um, building your profile. Some of you, which is brilliant, are spending um, more time on that, even some more than three hours. Um, and we're kind of in the middle in terms of searching for jobs. You've maybe tried using social media before, but um, could do with some more advice. So whether um, you already have a strong online presence or just getting started, so whatever you answered to those questions, um, the content of this webinar will help you develop and will make a positive impact for your online profiles. So firstly, let's understand what your online presence actually is. Your online presence is made up of all of your online personal and professional profiles, as well as any information about you which is publicly available on the internet. So not only things you've created yourself, like your Facebook profile, a blog, etc., but also things which other people have created. For example, this could include any articles which may have been written which feature you, uh, photos you've been tagged in, and any times you feature on a website. As you can see, your online presence can end up being a lot bigger than you may originally realise, which is why it's so important to get it right. So why is your online presence important? The main benefit of having a strong online presence is that it increases your visibility. Just think of the opportunities available online if you're presenting yourself well. For one, you can reach a much bigger network of people, all from the comfort of your own home. When you develop your professional presence online, this also goes hand in hand with developing your overall professional mindset, which again will only open up more opportunities for you. You have a greater awareness of what is happening in different markets, both worldwide and locally, and a greater understanding of what is happening in industries you may be interested in. This not only results in you having a greater visibility of job opportunities, but also makes you more employable, as you can demonstrate you have strong commercial awareness. Take LinkedIn, for example. As this map shows, LinkedIn has over 706 million members in 200 countries and regions worldwide. Over 29 million of these members are in the UK. Furthermore, there are 50 million companies listed on LinkedIn. Just from these numbers and this map, you can see the benefits of being part of this massive worldwide network where you can access so many company and employee profiles. To further demonstrate the reach and scale of LinkedIn, 55 job applications are submitted through LinkedIn every second, with only seven seconds between every LinkedIn hire. We will go on to talk more about using LinkedIn to search and apply for jobs later in the webinar, but with over 20 million jobs on LinkedIn Jobs and such a big professional community of users, you can see why your online presence here is important. A good place to start when thinking about developing your online presence is to consider what your existing online presence is. Most of us now have multiple different accounts on social media and other online platforms. You should consider all of the different accounts you have and decide the best approach to take for each. We all know it's always best to be cautious with what you post online. But as an extra precaution, you should consider uh, setting your personal accounts to private. Go through the privacy settings on each of your profiles and adjust them accordingly. Check your privacy settings regularly to make sure they are kept up to date. As an easy way to check what's already out there about yourself is, is simply Google yourself. So Google your name and see what comes up. Also check through your social media profiles. Look at what you've posted in the past and things you have been tagged in. Delete anything that isn't appropriate. Look at it from the point of view that if a potential employer was searching for you online, make sure they can only find things you would want them to be able to see about you. Once you've sorted out your existing profiles, you can also separate the personal from the professional and then move on to de developing your presence with those professional profiles. We'll go on to talk about this more when we address which platforms are best to use. You can even consider setting up another account on a platform which you will consider as your dedicated professional rather than personal account. 
For example, if you're interested in marketing, you could set up a new Twitter account to follow accounts related to this industry and share your own thoughts. On platforms like Twitter and Instagram, you can create multiple accounts, which is a great way of developing your professional online presence. So we've got a couple of examples of this coming up from two brilliant professional Instagram accounts. So firstly, we've got Law Life with Lucy on Instagram. So as you can see, this is a legal Instagram account sharing news, highlights, insights and into studying and work life and general advice on career development, such as the post on networking, which you can see there. So we love this account because it's colourful and shows personality, but also demonstrates industry awareness and a great willingness to engage with a wider community. We asked Law Life with Lucy why they decided to create a professional Instagram account. They said, I set up a legal profile on Instagram to develop wider connections. Instagram is slowly but surely becoming more of a network to connect with legal professionals. I also love sharing my experiences in the hope I can help other people that come across my page. I think we can all learn from each other as, as there is a huge sense of community on Instagram. As you can see, there's a clear aim for this profile and it provides an excellent platform to network and develop skills. The second profile is another legal Instagram account. This profile shares industry specific knowledge, for example, recommending terminology dictionaries and revision books. It also shares career advice and even shared some notes from one of our earlier webinars, which we loved. Again, we love how this account is sharing tips with the community and also how it's tailored to a specific audience. So Miranda in law commented on the benefits of having this professional social media account. They said, I set up this Instagram profile to help those who need it during their journey in law, because I understand what it's like to be lost in the future profession and position you want to be in. The benefit this profile has is watching people achieving in their journey through my profile, seeing others reading advice and taking into consideration my tips and posts is the happiest thing for me. Another thing is that I gain a set of skills by making my posts and I can add to this experience to my CV. Moreover, I grew my network and met a lot of new people who also share their experience of the legal profession. So a good point to take away from this quote is adding the experience to your CV. Social media is a big part of all businesses now, so showing you're actively engaging with it professionally is a great skill to add. So thank you very much um, to those profiles for sharing their, their profiles with us and allowing us to share it with everyone. Um, and if you're on Instagram, it would be great to go and give them a follow to um, get a good example of professional accounts. So being professional online is a skill which now more than ever is very important to have. You should consider your tone of voice when posting, your grammar and spelling if you're using an online platform to directly contact potential employers, and think about any personal information on your profile. A professional tone doesn't mean you have to be overly formal and conventional, but consider your audience and what you want to achieve, and tailor your communications accordingly. For example, it goes without saying that for professional profiles, it's much more suitable to have a smart, simple picture of yourself rather than a crap photo of you in a bar holding a pint or a cocktail. You can also ask yourself the question before you post anything online. Would I be happy for my current or future employer to see this? If the answer is no, it's probably best to hit delete. It's so easy for things you say online to be taken out of context or misunderstood. So be aware of this and carefully consider what you have created before you click share. This is also important to consider if you're getting involved in debates online or sharing very personal opinions. Sometimes it can be best to remove yourself and not get involved. You should remain professional online throughout your career. There's always an element of trust involved when an organisation hires you. Be careful you're not sharing any confidential information or jumping the gun to shout about any company developments before you've been authorised to. Let's not forget that one of the best things about social media is that it allows you to convey your own personality. Don't underestimate the value of this to potential employers. It's great for them to see what makes you, you. 
why you are unique and worth hiring, and whether you would fit in with their organisation. Don't lose your personality by striving to be uber professional. Just take a step back and look at it and your profiles and your posts from an employer's point of view, so you don't share anything that would result in red flags. As we said at the start, there are now many different platforms where we can have an online presence. Many of you will probably have accounts for some, if not all, of the platforms shown here. So we've got LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. Don't get overwhelmed by the number of networks here. While it would be very impressive to do so, it isn't necessary to have a strong professional presence on every single one of them. Depending on the industry you're working in, or interested in working in, different platforms will have different benefits. For example, Pinterest and Instagram, being the most visual of these platforms, are huge in the creative industries. These platforms provide a good opportunity to build up an online portfolio where you can share your work and ideas. These are also great platforms to build a following based on your ideas and work, as well as getting inspiration from other people in the creative community. YouTube allows you to upload your own videos, which again could help you create an online portfolio or showreel. You can also watch tutorials on YouTube and comment on videos to start conversation with other creatives. So one network we recommend everyone has an active professional profile on, however, is LinkedIn. So this, this platform provides the best opportunity to develop your professional profile online and grow your network. So we've just got another quick question here. Um, I'll bring this poll up. How many of you currently have a LinkedIn profile and are you very active on LinkedIn? So we've either got, no, you haven't got a profile at all. Um, yes, you've got a profile, but you don't really um, log, into Instagram, uh, log into LinkedIn, sorry, very much. Uh, you're not very active. Or yes, you've got a profile and you're very active on LinkedIn and you use it regularly. So I'll just give a few more seconds for everyone to select their answers to that. Okay, I can see most of you have voted, so I'll share the results now. So as we can see, there's um, just over half of you say you've got a profile, but you're not very active. A few of you haven't got a profile set, set up at all yet. and 41% of you have a profile and use it regularly, which is really brilliant to see. So thank you again, everyone, for taking part in that uh, poll. Um, we're going to move on to talk in more depth about LinkedIn, and whatever your answer is to this question, the information we'll talk through now should help you set up or optimise your account so you can make the most of this fantastic platform. So LinkedIn is probably the platform most people jump to when they think of professional social media because it's primarily a site for professional networking. So for those of you that didn't already have a LinkedIn profile, you should definitely set one up. We've included a handy guide to setting up a LinkedIn profile in the resources of this webinar, which should help you get started along with what we're about to talk about now. As we said earlier, one of the main benefits of LinkedIn is the sheer scale and reach of this platform, over 700 million members in 200 countries. This provides a fantastic base for you to network with professionals from all around the country and the world. Another big feature of LinkedIn is how your profile can act as an online CV. It really is invaluable to have a current, up-to-date LinkedIn profile, as this is available for recruiters and potential employers to see. You never know what opportunities this visibility could result in. Alongside this, uh, LinkedIn is a fantastic profile to share information about your achievements and interests. You can create posts or link to your profile any results you've achieved, awards you've earned, articles or reports you have written, presentations you've given, your take on the latest big news in your industry, the list goes on of what you can share. LinkedIn is also really beneficial for connecting with or following inspirational figures and companies which you admire. This way you can not only see any opportunities they may have, but also keep up to date with industry news and updates. 
When you follow the right companies and people, those that are relevant to you and your goals, scrolling through your newsfeed on LinkedIn is a productive and motivational activity. So there are a lot of elements that you can make good use of to develop an effective and comprehensive LinkedIn profile. Here's a checklist of everything a good LinkedIn profile should include. For those of you that don't already have a profile, you can use this list to help you when you build it. If you do already have a profile, like most of you did have, use this, this checklist to check you have all of these sections on your profile and also to see whether any of them can be optimized and improved. You should make full use of the space available to you on LinkedIn. There are dedicated sections for your professional experience, voluntary experience, education and skills. Keep each section up to date and add any new experience, just like you would to your CV. This not only ensures you are putting across all of your experience and the best version of yourself, but also makes you more visible to employers. Profiles which are updated with more recent content are prioritised in searches. We'll talk through each of these sections in more detail now using uh, Sophie's profile. So a lot of you will have seen Sophie in our webinar before, but for those of you who don't know, Sophie is our founder and MD, and she has a really good uh, LinkedIn presence. And some of you may even be connected with her already. So let's start by looking at your profile and header photos. Your profile photo should be just of you looking clear and professional, taking up the majority of the frame. Avoid a blurry, cropped image of yourself from a group photo. Keep your profile picture up to date and choose a photo that reflects how you really look. Your profile photo is part of the personal brand you are building and you want to come across as friendly and trustworthy. If you can, get someone else to take the photo for you, or alternatively, set the self timer on your camera or phone. This will look more professional than a selfie. Choose a header image which is relevant to you and your industry. If you're searching for a job, this could be something to do with the type of job you would like. For example, if you want to work in the creative industry, you could use your header image to exhibit some of your portfolio. If you are currently at university, it could be an image of your favorite part of campus that you could use as your header image. Then once you get a job, you can use a header which relates directly to the company you are working for. The next part of your profile are your headline and about section. Your headline is a short phrase which shows under your name on your LinkedIn profile, offering a quick summary of who you are and what you do. It also shows up under your name when you feature in the LinkedIn uh, news feed, searches, meaning it's one of the most widely visible sections of your LinkedIn profile. Definitely make good use of your headline to give a sharp and positive summary of who you are, what you do currently and what you can offer. Using specific keywords within your headline can also help your profile appear higher in more relevant searches on LinkedIn. If you are a student or graduate currently looking for work or preparing to apply for jobs, you can use your headline effectively to show this. Be clear what you have studied and what you are looking for. You could even state one or two of your top skills. So an example could be linguistics graduate with strong interpersonal skills seeking opportunities in translation. Your about section is an expansion of your headline. Don't underestimate the power of a great bio on your professional social media accounts. Make good use of this space to summarise who you are, what you can do and what you are passionate about. On LinkedIn, this is your introduction, what people will read when deciding whether to connect with you or what employers will use to decide whether to look further into your profile to see if you would be a good fit for their organisation. If you are currently looking for opportunities, you can use this space on LinkedIn to summarise your key skills, but also make it clear what sort of role you are looking for. You can see here that Sophie's About section is very detailed, as it also talks about the success of her business, SRS. Yours doesn't have to be this long, but should, in the same way as Sophie's, give a summary of your experience, projects you've worked on, 
and what makes you special. Now you can start adding your experience to your profile or building on this if you've already got it added in. So LinkedIn has two separate sections for you to add your professional experience and your voluntary experience. You should add the company or organisation you've worked for, what your role um, or job title was or is, and the dates you worked for them. Then go on to highlight your duties, responsibilities, and the skills you have developed or showed and what you achieved while you were in this role. So don't just have a list of the companies you worked for, make sure you're highlighting your skills that you exhibited within those roles. So when you do this, make sure you focus specifically on your skills and contributions rather than what the team did or just describing the organisation you worked for. Focus on your achievements and the impact that you made. At this stage in your job search, this education section on your profile is very important. As well as your degree, you can also add your A-levels, GCSEs, any other relevant qualifications you may have. You should list the institution you studied at, what you studied, the year of study, and what grade you achieved or you are predicted to achieve. You can also use this space for your education in the same way as you did for uh, your experience and voluntary experience to highlight the skills and qualities you've developed in your degree. For example, you can include any extended projects you've worked on, particular articles or um, uh, reports you have written, and any additional activities you got involved with during your degree, which would include societies, sports teams, etc. Moving further down your profile, the skills section is a dedicated area for you to state what your key skills are. Focus on transferable skills that you can use in the industry you're interested in. For example, you've got teamwork, communication, analysis, leadership, things like that. You can get others to endorse you for your skills to add further credibility. Ask your peers, lecturers, careers team to endorse you for skills that they have seen you exhibit or see if they think any of your key skills are missing. You should also visit others profiles and endorse their skills and then you can ask them to do the same for you. Be careful who you are asking here and make sure it's people that have really seen your skills in action and can give you valuable endorsements. So moving on from these, recommendations can be a very powerful addition to your profile as they're a personalised account of you and your work from another person. Again, you could ask peers, lecturers, a boss at a part-time job, anyone you've worked on with a meaningful project with to write a recommendation for you. Yet again, if you write uh, one for someone that you've been impressed with, you could ask them to do the same for you. And again, I'll reiterate the importance of asking as for a recommendation of someone that has really worked closely with you and will be able to write something valuable. So finally, the accomplishments section allows you to simply list any kind of awards, etc. you've been nominated for or awarded with. You can include any awards teams you've been part of have achieved here too. So finally, that covers the important sections of your LinkedIn profile. Don't be overwhelmed by all of these sections and think you should have reams of experience, skills, awards and recommendations on there straight away. Just make sure you don't let your profile go cold once you've initially set it up. Keep updating it as you develop your skills and achievements so your profile continues to grow. As well as having a profile on LinkedIn, you should also be an active user. This is one area where making posts comes in. Making posts on LinkedIn is a simple way to get a message out to your audience and also expand your reach and following on the platform. When we go back again to the figure of 700 million members on LinkedIn, this shows how many professionals and experts your posts have the power to reach. So before making your post, you should consider what content you want to share. Is it an article, video, photo, news, opinion, statement, etc.? 
Also consider what message you want to convey and what is the aim of the post you are sharing. Is it to highlight something you've achieved, explain something you've done, or demonstrate a skill or quality you have? Using hashtags is a great way for your post to reach people who aren't already in your network. You can add a few hashtags to the end of your post that are relevant to what you are posting about and to the audience that you would like to reach. So examples for your posts might be hashtag careers, hashtag graduate recruitment, or hashtag employability. You can also share posts made by other people or companies on LinkedIn. When you share something, try to always add your own comment to show what you think of the thing you're sharing and why it is worthwhile for other people to see this content. So a little task now, if you're not already familiar with posting on LinkedIn, why not give it a try after this webinar? Say what you've attended, why you decided to attend, and also what you learned. This is a great way to demonstrate how you're being proactive to develop your skills and knowledge, and also putting into practice what you've learned. If you decide to do a post, please do tag us and use hashtag lockdownyourcareer so we can see. And you can also start to connect with others who are posting from this webinar. We've already seen so many great posts from students who have connected with us after attending one of our webinars, and we'd love to see more of these. So growing your network is another important part of developing your online presence. You should be conscious when you're growing your network. Don't just create it, but sustain it as well. You never know when one of your connections may have an opportunity that you can get involved with. Be active rather than passively scrolling through your newsfeed. Start conversations and comment on people's posts if they interest you. Offer congratulations if one of your connections has achieved something amazing. These will all help you to be an active member of LinkedIn, which goes hand in hand with growing your network. There are many people on LinkedIn to connect with. You've got colleagues, university alumni, people from companies you admire, people you know from your time in education, people you may have met at careers fairs, whether they were in person or virtual careers fairs, given um, how a lot of these events have become virtual. You've also got your university professors and your career service team. Create a varied network of people at different levels so you have a diverse set of experience and opinions on your newsfeed. When sending invites to connect, consider what do you want to achieve from this connection? What are the desired outcomes? For example, is it you want to get a job? You want to gain insights? You want to read their updates? You want to see if you could collaborate? Don't just spam people with invites. Remember the quality of your network is just as important as the quantity, if not more so. You can also customize your invites to add a more personal touch. So when you send an invite, you can type a little message to this person. Customized invites should be clear, specific, tailored and professional. So next we'll talk about using LinkedIn to search for jobs. To search for jobs. The LinkedIn job search function is a really valuable tool that you should definitely make use of if you aren't already using it. Remember from earlier, there are over 20 million open jobs on LinkedIn. To find this section, just go to the jobs bit on your menu on LinkedIn. Searching for jobs on LinkedIn works in a similar way to other jobs boards websites. You can search by job title, company, skills, and also the area you would like this job to be in. You can then save jobs you are interested in to refer back to as you're writing your applications. Another great feature of the LinkedIn job search is that you can set up alerts. If there's a particular job you really want, or a company or organisation you'd love to work for, set up an alert for it. So you can see there an example for Northumbria Police. So if you were interested in working for this organisation, turn the alerts on and you will be made aware when any jobs for this organisation become available. Then you'll be notified so you won't miss out.
So LinkedIn Jobs is also great in that it gives you recommendations of jobs you might be interested in. These recommendations are based on what you've previously searched for and keywords in your profile. So this again emphasizes the need to spend time developing your profile so it contains the right things and really has those keywords for your skills, experience and what you would like to do in the future. For some jobs on LinkedIn, you can apply through LinkedIn Easy Apply. This will show up within the job advert on LinkedIn, as you can see for this one here. Most times, this will still require you to upload a CV and answer some application questions. Some may be simple, but some may be more detailed, depending on what the company is asking for. Although it's called Easy Apply, don't think of this as just applying for a job simply by clicking a button. Make sure you use this feature with purpose. You should still spend time reading the job description, tailoring your CV to show why you are a good fit and answering questions thoroughly. If you need any help with this, check out our webinar on CV, cover letters and application forms, which is on our YouTube channel. Remember as well that if you apply for jobs directly through LinkedIn, this potential employer has immediate access to your LinkedIn profile. So make sure your profile is up to scratch and represents you well in the same way that your CV should do. Always read job descriptions carefully. They may prefer you to email them directly with a CV and cover letter rather than using this easy apply feature. If you would like clarity on what's best, don't be afraid to seek out a relevant contact to send a polite and professional message to. So that's an overview of using LinkedIn to search for jobs. If you're searching for a job now or in the future, hopefully you can put this information into practice to elevate your job search. So moving away from LinkedIn, online courses are another great way to bolster your online presence. Not only do online courses provide an excellent way for you to develop your skills, they're also something you can shout about in your online profiles or share your achievements from in posts. Many courses are free once you sign up, but some may have a cost attached. So make sure you are aware of this in case you don't want to pay to complete the course. Read descriptions of courses and also reviews of them before you start to ensure they are worth the time investment. You can find courses on really specific subjects you're interested in or more broad areas. For example, if you're interested in digital marketing, you could start with a digital marketing basics course before narrowing down to more specific areas like social media marketing or email marketing. So you're already making a great start in this area by attending these webinars, but there are lots of other online courses out there. And we've got here just a few places to find them. So firstly, there's Google Digital Garage, which, as the name implies, has a lot to do with um, developing digital skills. You've got FutureLearn, which has multiple courses on different areas of different length. Uh, LinkedIn Learning, which is obviously connected to LinkedIn. Um, for this one, it's worth checking with your career service, whether they have access to it, because I'm aware that a lot of university career services have purchased access for their students to LinkedIn Learning. Um, so this is worth checking out with your university. And then you've also got Open Learn, which is um, lots of courses on different areas run by the Open University. So have a browse of these different platforms and see what's available that interests you. Try completing a course that will add to your skill set and is really relevant to what you want to achieve. Once you've completed the course, you can then add it into your LinkedIn profile. So before I close the webinar with my final thoughts and tips to remember, let's hear from James Darley with regards to his overall top tips for creating an online presence. James is currently the founder and CEO of Transformation Society sorry, Transform Society, and has over 20 years of experience in graduate recruitment, including being Head of Graduate Recruitment at Teach First. Let's hear what James has to say. 
Uh, my name is James Darley. I run uh, the Transform Society Alliance, uh, which are five public sector employers. Hopefully you've heard of some of the brands, Teach First, Police Now, Frontline, Think Ahead and Unlocked. So if you're interested in public sector, please do have a little look at us uh, and see if we are of interest. So I've been asked to tell you a little bit about what would be my top tips for developing your online presence. Uh, well, the first for me is that it's really something that you should do. So you're going to have to do it. So if it's not something you've done before, I'm afraid uh, you really need to try and do it because it's, it's something you need to do. Um, but think about how you want to be represented online. So if someone was to Google you, what would they see? What would come up? Would it make you proud? Would you be happy with what you see? Um, and it's likely that you're thinking, well, I've probably got social things that I do online um, and now I want to do professional things online. The only issue here is that the lines are getting more and more blurred. Um, so do remember that anything that you post at any point in your life, this is a bit depressing, uh, could be found and observed by future employees or colleagues. So you just need to be um, a little bit careful. But on the professional side, uh, you should definitely um, think about LinkedIn. So you need to create a profile, manage your profile, um, and strategically utilize uh, LinkedIn. So you should follow organizations that you're interested in. Um, you should see if you can connect with alumni uh, working at any interesting uh, organization that you want to work for so that you can ask them questions um, kind of get that insider knowledge of what it's like to work there. Um, often job opportunities now get posted on LinkedIn. So it's a great way to um, start your professional uh, online presence by creating that LinkedIn um, profile. It's quite simple to do. Um, just head to LinkedIn and follow kind of all of their um, helps that they have. In terms of kind of showing the whole you, um, I definitely recommend thinking about you know, things that you do in your social life as well. So whilst um, your profile you know, will be there with your academics and your university and courses and things like that, um, you know, think about you know, your interests, the community work that you do, whether you've been helping the vulnerable, sports, extracurricular. Um, do try and add as much as you possibly can so that we're not just seeing the basics of your kind of name and university and, and maybe some grades. We're actually starting to get a feel for who you are um, as a person. Um, next, I think I would think about joining appropriate and relevant networks. Um, this would be to kind of increase your knowledge, but also your connections, and you can start building um, relationships. So have a little look at, at things that you're interested in, you know, whether that's kind of, you know, trading clubs or whether it might be, um, you know, other networks, um, you know, identity networks that, that you might, affinity networks that you might be a part of. You know, these are all great ways to kind of build up your network um, and have more contacts that you can go out to when you want to ask questions or you're interested in an employer and you spot that someone is there um, and you can just send them a quick message and say, oh, I'm interested in applying and I'd just love to know, you know, X and Y or could we have a quick Zoom coffee or whatever it might be um, just to, to get some inf information. Uh, my last two tips, I think, are um, regularly review your online presence. Uh, so I know it's scary sometimes to do it, but Google yourself, um, see what comes up, um, but also ask others to do it. Get friends to do it, family to do it, colleagues to do it, um, and, and see what they say. Are they impressed with what they see? Uh, can they give you feedback and say there's not enough of this or there's too much of that and I didn't like this? Um, it's very good to get someone else to have a little look at it as well and see what they think. And my final tip, um, just think about what you're posting, um, socially or professionally. Um, I always say kind of, you know, don't post anything you wouldn't want your mum to see. Um, and I think that's a good advice for, for everyone. So my key messages are, you've got to do it, you must do it, it's a great thing to do, uh, but think about it, be strategic, start building your online presence now, um, and make sure you utilize it to the best of your ability. So thank you to James. Uh, my name is Sorry about that. Thank you to James for sharing his brilliant top tips there, which I think have picked up on a lot of things we've talked about throughout this webinar as well. So to sum up, here are our, our top tips to take away and put into practice after this webinar. Firstly, do a thorough audit of your existing online presence and see what's already out there. Next, consider setting up dedicated professional accounts like the examples we saw on social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter. You should then ensure that you have a LinkedIn profile and also that you are active on LinkedIn. Make full use of all the sections on your LinkedIn profile 
and use them to demonstrate, demonstrate your skills and qualities, not just make a list of everything you've ever done. You can use posts on LinkedIn to grow your network, and this is something we definitely recommend you should start to do. Next, if you are searching for a job or if you know what you're going to be interested in, make sure you set up job alerts on LinkedIn jobs and start to use this feature as part of your job search. And you can also start to research online courses to add to your skill set and get involved with that. And finally, one really big overarching message to bear in mind for your whole online presence is to always be professional, but do make sure to let your personality shine so that everyone can see what is brilliant about you personally. So now I'll hand back over to Helen to talk through some helpful resources for this webinar before we close. Thanks very much Zoe there, much appreciated and it's been good to actually see quite a few of you have been linking in with me already uh, so that's great to see and you've kept me busy with some questions um, particularly with regards to LinkedIn. Um, I've hopefully answered them all and um, there was a couple um, comments around um, the about section, the bio um, for Sophie, the one that we showed being quite long. Um, and I have to say, I've talked about that on Zoom chat. I've seen some very good long profiles, as long as there's an initial summary um, that you can read before going into more detail. And there's some very good short and snappy profiles as well. Um, something I'd probably like to add to my answer to that question is spend some time looking at other people's profiles, um, particularly in the industries and the employers that you're interested in, see how they're set up, um, see what their about sections are like, because you probably want yours um, to be similar or at least to appeal um, to what they're looking for as well. So I spend a bit of time doing that. Uh, in terms of the resources um, from this webinar, uh, as always, uh, we always encourage you to approach your career service um, for, for advice around online presence and just in general with regards to the graduate recruitment process uh, and talking to employers. We mentioned at the beginning uh, my colleague Sophie Millican, who's written the book From Learner to Earner, which is a really helpful guide to the different stages of the graduate recruitment process. And a lot of our earlier webinars are based on this. We also have a LinkedIn profile setup guide and a LinkedIn profile checklist. And now these resources will be available on our website. And following this webinar, you'll get a Zoom email uh, with, with a link to take you to that web page where all of our free resources are for all of our webinars. Um, you'll also be able to access a recording of this webinar at a later date. It'll be uploaded to our YouTube channel, which you can find just by putting in SRS, Recruitment and Employability Expert. But we've got another couple of live sessions to run for this particular topic over the next couple of weeks. So we'll be uploading a recording of this webinar in a couple of weeks time for you to access. Because I know there was quite a bit of information there, so you might want to pause and, and review it at your own leisure at a later date. And you can see as well, there's also uh, online course websites to look at. There's some really good stuff out there at the moment. And as Zoe talked through some of it, I definitely want to explore. There's been some fantastic content created um, for courses that you can do at your own leisure and come away with some great qualifications as well. And then finally, uh, we have a link to gradtouch.com. So they're one of our partner uh, sister organisations. And we're just encouraging students and graduates uh, to register with them, to look them up because it's a great platform for you to find jobs. It's also a great platform for various articles on the graduate recruitment process and employers and so on. So one to have a look at. I can just ask you to move on the, the slide there, Zoe. So we've got a few of our social media handles there. And um, as I say, please give us a follow, whether that's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, please keep connecting with us on LinkedIn. Um, please put your thoughts and feedback on, on how you found the webinar today. And following this particular webinar, you will be taken to a very short survey and um, just asking for your feedback uh, around how you found it. It's very, very quick to do. It'll literally take you a minute um, and we'd really appreciate your thoughts on how it's gone. Um, but thank you very much to all of you who've joined us today. Um, it's, it's been great to have your questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Does that cover all the questions, Helen? It does, yes. yes. I think we've covered them all. To so say anyone who does have a question they want to ask in a separate forum, please feel free to, to link in. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone.